what's going on guys ready for full-time adventure and welcome back to another episode in today's episode we got a little package delivered we're going to do a quick unboxing and it's semi-rural i guess rural area quite rural and what better place to give it a quick run let's unbox it's very alien like doesn't it So, the unboxing experience is not amazing, <laughs> but it's still cool. Got a modem. Got a modem. And a very long. Oh, oh damn, that is a long cord. I'm assuming it could be there. We have access to multiple thousands of satellites now. We'll set it up, set it up the app and then we'll do a little reception test and a speed test and stuff like that. So we're just going to do a stow function where it just puts it back to where it was in storage. So if you wanted to pack it away, you just hit stow. There we go. Damn! Here it is. The 12 month review of the Starlink satellite internet dish from Elon Musk SpaceX. Now, we only really have positive things to say about this. This has been an absolute game changer for us traveling remote, having the ability to not only upload videos to YouTube in the most remote places, but also watch YouTube videos and just roam the internet probably faster than we would have done in uh, our built up city area in any way. So this thing's been thrown in the back of the ute, bouncing around in thousands and thousands of kilometers of corrugated dirt roads. Yeah, it's got a few scratches and dings and nicks. As far as the negatives for Starlink over the past 12 or plus months we've been using it is mainly the power consumption. It, uh, if when we go really remote, it is a little bit power hungry. There are some mods you can do now, however, some things you can buy, I might even link them. That you can convert it to 12 volts and stuff like that. The other thing is probably also, it doesn't really appreciate being under trees, but they give a long enough cord so you can just put it far away and mount it far away. So those really aren't even big negatives. Yeah, to cut a boring video short, we love it and we'll be using it until something better comes out. You'll be seeing us use this all out, all throughout the travel series, but uh, this is just future us giving a quick review. Are you recording? Yep. Bye, see you. Goodbye, Chrome. Working inside a canopy, it's about 38 degrees outside. Good, just building the frame here for the compressor. And gonna run the wiring now. Today we're gonna be looking at the SeaTech battery monitor. We'll go and fit it, I'll show you the app, how it works, and it'll be a quick install. So the reason I put one of these on is because some of the accessories will still be run on the starter battery. And we just wanna keep an eye on it. it this will actually send a notification on your phone if your battery drops to a certain level. So let's go and quickly fit it and I'll show you. Righto, super simple. 10 mil spanner, loosen your positive 10 mil nut, loosen your negative 10 mil nut. And it also does come with a double-sided sticky tape pad that you can stick on there on the back as well. Well, there we go, she's installed. Just mounted it to the bracket there. So as for the app, it's just the SeaTech app. That's your basic look at the app there. The overview, you take a photo if you want and you can place it there. If you have multiple ones on multiple vehicles, boats, caravans, wherever, then you know which one's which. 
go view, view details. It gives you a pretty basic information there, just the percentage of the battery there. Uh, that's your more important bit there, the voltage. And then it, it does give the temperature as well. And then over here, over a length of time, months, weeks, however long, you will have a graph there that will show you the exact cycles of your battery usage the state of charge and the temperature all gets logged over there and that's it